It's no secret to gardeners that many Australian plants are adapted to respond to fire. Some need the fire to help open up and release their seed. And one of the most amazing things that can happen in the landscape after fire are those mass flowering events or ephemeral wildflowers that absolutely blaze beautifully. But something you might not know is that the answer to this spectacle lies not in the heat of the fire, but in the smoke. In the 90s, a group of scientists at Western Australia's Kings Park sifted through the nearly 4,000 chemicals contained in smoke to identify the individual compounds responsible. And today, I want to show you how you can harness those magical properties in smoke at home. You're going to need a vessel for the fire, a bucket with a lid, some hose, water, fuel for the fire, vermiculite and seed, and a vacuum. The first thing you need to do is make a small fire. And you can do it in any vessel, really. This is just a terracotta pot, but a kettle barbecue works really well, too. Because it's not a big, hot fire you're trying to make. It's a cool, smouldering, smoky burn. Now, while that's burning down, I need to get ready to capture those chemicals in the smoke. And I'm going to do it in a couple of ways. The first one is by passing the smoke through some water. I'm using this dust extraction bucket, which I've half filled with water. And then I'm going to use a piece of hose, which will run right through this hole down to the bottom. So it's actually submerged in the water. Now that the smoke is really cooking away there, I'm going to add this, which is vermiculite. It's very porous and I want to use it to capture the smoke. So I'm just going to carefully sit that in the top there and then on goes the lid. Once the smoke is flowing, you simply connect the hose from the fire to the bucket. Connect the vacuum, which creates suction to draw the smoke through the water and let it run for between 30 minutes and an hour. All this while the vermiculite is also absorbing the smoke in the fire pot. You can see the colour of that water has changed quite drastically because all of the compounds in the smoke have been absorbed by it as the smoke passed through the water. And this is quite cool to touch. Now I'm just going to take these over the propagation area and show you how to use them. Having some smoke infused materials on hand really is unlocking a key to propagation. But the first thing I'm going to use is the vermiculite. I'm going to mix a small amount in a potting media. So that's going in there and then I'll mix that through. And then that goes straight into the cells. And then I'm just going to sow some seed on top. A little bit more vermiculite. That just sort of allows light in, holds that seed in place. Keep them moist. I've mixed a little bit of the smoke water, just a small amount, about a cup, into a couple of litres of water to water in my seedlings. For all those destructive outcomes of fire, there are, of course, some amazing regenerative properties, and particularly for those plants that have evolved to thrive in it. I've even read research that suggests smoke can help grow bigger, better tomato seedlings. So I reckon it's a really, really great process to have a go at. Mm.